Thank you so much. Um, I'm completely honored to be here today, not only on such a distinguished <coughs> panel, but for such an impressive audience to speak to. And I'm going to be talking today about the role of reward dysfunction in obesity. And I'd like to start this by taking a bit of an evolutionary perspective. If we consider the majority of human existence, food was scarce, and the amount of calories that needed to survive was really challenging to obtain. And our reward system evolved in part to help us acquire these items that we needed to survive. So what I have here is a simplified schematic of the mesolimbic dopamine system, which is a key region, a key system involved in reward and motivation. So what you can see here is the ventral tegmental area, which is the origin of dopaminergic neurons. And it communicates with the dorsal and ventral striatum. These are regions of the brain that are involved in pleasure, motivation, and habit learning. It also communicates with the hippocampus, a neural region involved in memory, as well as the frontal cortex, a neural regions, neural regions associated with planning, decision making, and controlling behavior. This system plays a key role in our eating behavior. And from an evolutionary perspective, that's really extremely helpful for reward to be playing a role. So when we eat a food, we experience pleasure. And this increases the likelihood that we we'll want to come back to that food and consume it again. We'll remember cues that signal the availability of a certain food so we can come back to it. And we'll also experience motivation and drive to seek out food to ensure that we get sufficient calories to survive. From an, another perspective of the brain is that this reward system is particularly sensitive to higher calorie foods relative to lower calorie foods. Again, from an evolutionary perspective, that's extremely beneficial. High calorie foods were more scarce, harder to obtain, required more motivation to acquire, but they provided a greater survival benefit in that they gave us more calories for times of famine. So what's happened? Our biology has stayed pretty much more or less the same, but our food environment, as we heard um, from Dr. Chan today, has really gone from famine to feast. So if we look at this from a reward perspective, what used to be at the top of the high calorie food reward ladder were things like fruits and nuts. But in our industrialized society, we have gotten very effective and efficient at extracting high calorie, very rewarding ingredients like sugar and fat, and we've gotten very, very good at combining these into thousands of different food combinations. And this has led us to a food environment that is saturated with high calorie foods that are particularly rewarding, are much more pleasurable than anything our brains ever evolved to handle. <laughs> and, uh, I think I definitely have a different experience eating, you know, um, a strawberry cheesecake than a strawberry itself. <laughs> and it's much cheaper and it's so much easier to obtain than those high calorie foods in the past. One of the consequences of this may be that these foods are sufficiently powerful in activating our reward system, that they are capable of overriding our relatively weaker satiety signal, and that we can continue to be driven forward to consume these foods. This mismatch between our <coughs> biology, that thinks we're still in that time of famine, and that we need to be sensitive to these food cues in our environment, and the modern food environment that's completely saturated with these highly processed foods is one of the key contributors to obesity. So I want to talk a little bit about the power of cues. We know that as a cue becomes repeatedly coupled with the consumption of a high calorie food, it can become extremely powerful. We know that it can become very, very salient and noticeable in our environment. And you may experience this if you're driving down the highway, maybe on the way to an early morning meeting, and you're tired, but you keep finding that your eyes are captured by the sign for your favorite fast food restaurant. <laughs> this is an example of the salience of this cue that signals the availability of high calorie foods. <laughs> What happens when you're exposed to these high calorie foods is that it can trigger dopaminergic release, especially in the striatum, and that this can trigger a strong motivation, drive, and desire for this high calorie food. One thing that's really important about this is we see that individuals with obesity relative to normal weight individuals appear to be more sensitive to these powerful food cues and that they're more powerful in activating the reward regions of the brain. This greater reward-related response to these high-calorie food cues predicts greater difficulty losing weight in weight loss treatments. It also can predict which teenagers are most prone to gain weight over time. 
in contrast to this greater activation in response to food cues, we, there's some evidence that repeated consumption of these high calorie foods may actually diminish the amount of pleasure we get when we're consuming the food. <coughs> So we're not getting as much hedonic bang for our buck when we're eating our bowl of ice cream or the pizza that's so common. <laughs> Although we're experiencing less pleasure when we're consuming these foods, these cues are so powerful in being able to drive desire and motivation for these foods that they overpower this less, this diminished liking response and trigger continued wanting that maintains and supports overeating. It's very important to acknowledge that the reward system of the brain communicates with other systems that we know are involved in obesity. For example, the homeostatic system and the reward system are very intertwined. We know that gut, gut peptides that are involved in hunger, like orexin and ghrelin, prime the dopamine system. So when we're hungry, our dopamine system is more reactive to the food cues in our environment. And this may be part of the reason that when we try and go on a diet and we're calorically depleted, our brain is not on our side. Our brain is still reacting even more strongly to the food cues in our environment and triggering cravings, which is part of the reason it may be so hard to adhere to these lower calorie diets over the long term. On the flip side, hormones that are associated in satiety like leptin and insulin and food consumption are thought to diminish the reactivity of the dopamine system in healthy individuals. Although we see evidence that this satiety is elective, less effective in reducing reward-related responses in individuals with obesity. Another system that's incredibly important to consider is the role of stress. So we know that cortisol, a hormone associated with stress exposure, also appears to prime the dopamine system, making us more sensitive to food cues and more likely to experience food cravings in times of stress. But at that same time, stress appears to reduce the effectiveness of cognitive control systems in our brain that help us put the brakes on our eating. So in times of hunger or stress, we're particularly vulnerable to the food cues in our environment and hedonically driven eating. So in sum, I'd like to point out that we are currently operating in a food environment that is very, very replete with foods that are powerfully engaging our reward system. This reward system seems to be more sensitive in individuals with, who are prone to obesity, and that experiences like hunger and stress appear to make us more vulnerable to times of overeating and weight gain over time. Thank you very much.